wanted to talk today about one aspect of relationships that is vital for every single relationship that we have. If we are to have enduring, long-lasting, high-quality relationships with people, we have to have this one thing in our lives, and we have to be able to practice this thing, and it's forgiveness. Everybody say forgiveness. Oh, that was pretty lame, right? I'll forgive you for saying it not so uh, wholeheartedly. Forgiveness. All right, there we go, yeah. Forgiveness is it's like the, the, the foundation for our, relation, for our relationships. If we're to have relationships that continue on, that endure, we're going to have to have forgiveness in our lives. The reason why is because we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. We, we, we live after Adam and Eve sinned, and therefore there's sin in our world. There's selfishness, there's sin. Don't look outside, look at yourself because that's where it all starts. If we look inside ourselves, we know that there's selfishness, there's sin. We make mistakes, we offend people, and people offend us. So the point is, is that in order to maintain and continue on in relationships, we have to be able to navigate through all of these offenses, and we need to be able to navigate through all of these broken things that happen in our lives. And the way that God made for us to be able to do that is through forgiveness. Until we get to heaven, we will never escape from living in a world that brings us pain. It's true. There's don't get me wrong, there's lots of blessings in the world. There's lots of good things in the world. But the truth is, there's also lots of pain. There's lots of difficult things that happen in our lives. So the best way for us to live through this pain is to bring our hurt to the pain healer. And that's Jesus. He's the one who can heal our pain. And it's not just... He heals our insides, but he also makes the way and lives as an example, lived in a, as an example, so that when we follow him and practice his ways, then we can experience the healing in our lives as well. Forgiveness is the way that God made for relationships to be restored. In any of your closest relationships, the truth is that we see in our lives that those who are closest to us are those who can hurt us the most, right? Those we trust are the ones who hurt us the most because maybe we have expectations or maybe we think this way or maybe we have this ideal, this thought, these thoughts about them. But the truth is those who are closest to us have the ability to hurt us the most and so what we need to do is to be able to navigate through those, to get through those hard times, and to bring restoration to, a relation, to relationships. Now, I want to say kind of on the, on the flip side of this is that I understand that we can't always make things 100% the way that they were before. When I'm talking about restoration... I'm talking about bringing, bringing a broken relationship back together. And I'm not, I'm not saying that, okay, we have to trust them again. We have to, we have to give our hearts to them again. We don't, we're not have to, we don't have to do this. But, but through forgiveness, we can begin to bring healing to our relationships, and, and even, even after there has been pain in these relationships. People make mistakes. People sin. People live selfishly and do things that offend others. The best way that we can prepare for these times is to learn to be someone who forgives. And honestly, it's not only for, the, for our relationships. It's not just for the other person, but it's also beneficial for us as well. 
The problem is, is that we don't like to forgive. And it's not something that normally comes naturally for us. When people offend us, one of the natural things we do is we, all right, I got to get even with them. I got to get even with them. I, I can't forget this. I, I'm not going to forgive them. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to think about it. Maybe I'm going to stew about it or, man, what can I do? How, how can I make this right? We have this feeling that we have to get even with people. We have this feeling, and I think it comes from we, we, we feel like justice has been wronged in our lives. We're, the thing that happened against us was unjust, and now I have to figure out what I can do to make it right again, to make it better, to make them feel the pain that I've felt. You don't know how you made me feel. So here, take this. This is the pain that you made me feel. That's how it feels. Feels good, doesn't it? That's what we do. That's what we do. We, we, we try to get even, or, or we, we think about it. We, we can't forgive them. We, we hold on to it. We don't let it go. But it starts to, kind of starts to eat us up inside. When, something, when someone does something to us, sometimes, sometimes we get offended by things that aren't even, that someone didn't, even do something intentional to us. They didn't even mean to hurt us, but we've taken an offense. We've taken uh, an offense, and now, even though they didn't intend to hurt us, they hurt us, and now that relationship is broken. But when people do things to us intentionally, we really have a lot of hurt and a lot of pain and we try to figure out on our own how we can take care of it. We want people to feel the same way that we are. We want to people to feel the same pain that we have, or sometimes even worse. We want people to suffer because they did it to me. This is how I feel. There you go. And sometimes we, try, we don't forgive because we don't trust we don't think, we don't just leave it and say, okay, you know, let God take care of it. We think, man, I'm, I, I can't trust God to take care of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take vengeance into my own hands. I'm going to take care of it myself. I'm going to do it. And we, we try to fix things on our own, but really what ends up happening is we end up hurting ourselves in the process. So... This is kind of what, I have this little bit of an illustration here, and it's, it's kind of a, a way that I think about forgiveness. And you guys have seen like post-it notes before, right? We have these post-it notes that we use at our office, got to remember this, so I jot this down and I put it up on my board so that I remember it, and then the next day I come, I can remember, you know, I have this meeting with so-and-so, or I have my to-do list here, or to-do list to that. Sometimes I think we have kind of post-it notes with our unforgiveness. Kind of have these little post-it notes. Okay, this person lied to me. I'm going to give myself a post-it note, and I'm not going to forget that. They lied to me. And so the next day you come, oh, yeah, he lied to me. I'm not going to forgive that. I'm going to remember that, and I'm just going to put that right there. Or they, they did something to injure me. All right, I'm going to put that one right there. And so the next time I see it, yeah, okay, don't forget about that. We got to get, we got to get that person back for this. Or maybe they gossiped about me. Ah, they gossiped about me. That wasn't right. Okay, so now I have that post-it note too. Or maybe I asked them to do something. They didn't do what I asked them to do. They disobeyed me, so I'm going to remember that one too. Or maybe it's bigger. Maybe someone broke your promises. They made a promise to me. They broke that promise, so now i got to get a bigger post-it note. So I'm not going to forget that one. That was a, a broken promise. Or they stole something from me. All right, there, that's a big one. I'm going to put that one right there. Hey, let's not forget that one, all right? There can be tons of things that we have in our lives. Somebody let us down, okay? I'm going to put that one right here. All right, another one. Or they betrayed us. 
Okay, let me put another post. Oh, my. So then, now the next day comes, and maybe you're, you started your day, and now you're having a good day, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, okay, remember when they let me down. And now my good day is over because now I'm starting to think about the things that I didn't forgive. And you kind of ruin your own day by having all of these reminders. Or maybe it was something really, really big. Maybe it was abuse. Maybe someone was unfaithful. Or maybe you trusted them with a business deal and they lost all your money. All right, I got to put that one right there. So that every time I get a drink of water, I'm going to get a drink of water. I'm going to remember that. I can't let that one go. And we have lots and lots of post-it notes. And we remember them all the time. Everywhere we go, we look at them. But what it reminds us of is the unforgiveness just reminds us of our pain. It just reminds us of all of those things that hurt us. And we're trying to get back at them. We're trying to do this. We're trying to do that because we feel pain. But we need to let it go. Let me read a verse in Ephesians 4, verse 32. Paul says, And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. All right? Can, I, can we, I think this is important for us to read. Let's read this one together. Can we do all that? Can we read this together? All right. One, two, three. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Okay? It doesn't say just be kind to your friends. It doesn't say just be kind to those people who are kind to you. No, it says be kind to one another, forgiving one another. And I underlined in that verse, even as God in Christ forgave you. So Paul is encouraging us that he's saying, just like God forgave you, forgive one another. Just like God forgave our sins, he's saying, you guys need to forgive each other. If you have offenses, if you have post-it notes that you're remembering, no, you don't remind yourself about that. Forgive. Forgive. Just like God forgave you. So then the next big question is, how did God forgive us? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's a good question because I have an answer for that. Sorry, let's read a, a passage in the Bible. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Okay, it's a little bit longer of a passage, but it's a story that illustrates how God forgave us. Okay, so if you don't mind, you have it in your phone, you can look it up, or we have it up here on the screen. I'm just going to read through it, but I want you to see how God forgives us. Okay, then Peter came up and said to him, talking to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Peter thought he was doing himself a favor and said, As many as seven times? I'm a good Christian. I'm going to forgive them seven times. Jesus said, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Some, uh, some translations say seven times, 70 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king. Okay, so I want you to see the main characters in this story. Compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. Okay, so he calls all of, all of his servants in. Not just one servant, but he called all of his servants in. He said, let's settle accounts. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. How many talents? 10,000, okay? 10,000 talents. Remember that, 10,000 talents. That'll come into play here in just a minute. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife, his children, and everything that he had, and payment be made. So the king said, all right, everybody come on in. And one, one of the servants come up. 
and he had a debt to the king, 10,000 talents. And uh, the guy says, hey, I can't pay. This is too much. And the king says, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to sell you. We're going to sell your kids. We're going to sell your wife. We're going to sell your house. We're going to sell your dog and your cats. And we're going to have to pay it all back. All right, so the servant, using wisdom, he fell on his knees, ignore, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. We'll see here in a minute that that was a, a, a silly thing to say. But he said, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master, or the king of that servant, released him and forgave his debt. So the king had compassion on him, he released him, and he forgave his debt. Okay, so the king did those three things. So how much did the, did this, did the servant owe him? Do you remember? 10,000 talents. Okay, don't forget that. When the same servant went out, so the guy, the, uh, the servant meets the king, the king forgives him. The servant starts to sing, I am free, I am free. The servant goes out. <clears throat> He found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. How much? A hundred denarii. Okay, so he owed the king 10,000 talents. This other guy owes him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him. Okay, the king didn't choke him, but he goes out and finds one of his fellow servants. He starts choking him. He says, come on, give me my money. Pay what you owe. His fellow, his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him. The exact same thing that he did before the king. He fell down and pleaded with him. He said, have patience with me and I will pay you. But the servant refused. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. Okay, next slide. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master, the king, all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Okay, this is a little bit of a serious story here. I mean, we're talking about jail and prison and torture and all that sort of stuff. But it's an, it's an illustration that proves a point. And I want to show you, the, the, I want to compare what each of the servants owed, okay? So do you remember how much the guy owed the king? Do you remember how much? 10,000 talents, right? 10,000 talents. And the other servant owed the one servant how much? A hundred denarii. Okay, so let's look at it. What a denarii is. A denarii is equal to about one day's wage. So you work for a day and you get a denarii. Okay? You work for two days, you get two denarii. Hey, don't go ahead of me yet, okay? All right? Don't jump ahead, all right? So... 100 denarii equals 100 days wages, which is about three or four months. You know, you work five days a week, six days a week. It'll, it'll average out to about four months wages. So, so maybe you make, you know, I don't know, $300 a month, say, for example. Four months, that's $1,200. It's not that big of a debt. You work hard, maybe in a year's time, you pay little by little, you could probably pay it off. It would take maybe a year or so. It's something that is possible to pay off. Okay? It's not a big deal. All right? So one denarii equals one day's wage. 100 denarii equals 100 days' wages or three or four months. All right, now we can go to the next one. All right? One talent, okay, take a look at this. One talent equals 6,000 denarii. All right? So that's 6,000 days wages. You know how many days that is? How many months that is? Just one talent? Well, I'm glad you asked. So we have the answer. 6,000, one talent equals 6,000 denarii. 6,000 denarii, let's go to the next slide. 
is about 20 years' wages. One talent. Okay, one talent. So if I have one talent, that's worth about 20 years' worth of wages. That's a long time. Okay? So let's go to the next slide. 10,000 talents. 200,000 years' wages. That is how much the servant owed the king. 200,000 years. Not just months. This is years. Okay. Now, the servant said, this is how crazy he was. The servant said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just wait. I'm going to pay it off. Yeah, right you are. You're going to work for 200,000 years and pay all that off. No, you're not. There is no chance in the world you don't have enough days, you don't have enough years in your life to be able to pay that off. You're crazy to think that you're actually going to be able to pay off 10,000 talents worth of debt. But think about it. He was forgiven that much. He was forgiven 200,000 200, years worth of debt. And now he goes out and he chokes his fellow servant. You owe me three months' wages. Come on. This was an insult. What he did was an insult to the king. Because the king forgave him all of this. He's the servant of the king. He was forgiven everything. 200,000 years worth of debt. Now he goes out, measly three or four months. Give it back to me. Give it back to me. I can't forgive you. Let's put you in jail. This is why the king was so mad and angry is because what he was doing was an insult to the king. Because he was forgiven so much. He was given his freedom. And he used that freedom to, to force other people to give him back something that was so small and so little. So we talked about how does God forgive us? Well, obviously in this story, God is the king. He's forgiven us 200,000 years and more worth of debt that we owed him. He has given us freedom. But this story is, is really amazing because I think there's two parts to it. The first part is that as Christians, as people who believe in God, we've come to God. We all have our story. We all have our testimony. When we have thrown ourselves at the foot of the cross saying, God, forgive me. And God has so graciously not just forgiven one or two of our sins, but 200,000 years worth of debt that we had, that we owed him. But now some of us go out, and we need to live our lives. We're like this servant. And some of us, we can't forgive. Someone does something really little to us. Just a couple months worth of wages. And we're holding it against people. No, we have been forgiven so much. And just like God has forgiven us, we need to pass on that forgiveness to others. Amen? Just as Christ has forgiven. Just as God in Christ also has forgiven us, we also need to forgive one another. That is the story of living in God's mercy and grace. We've freely received. We are like that servant. We're like that servant who was forgiven by the king. The king said, yeah, okay, I'm going to forgive, your, forgive all of your debts. But then... Do we go out and we can't forgive someone who owes us just something really, really little? Or are we going to pass on that forgiveness? Are we going to pass on that grace and mercy because we are servants of the king? This is why forgiveness is so important to God and also needs to be so important to us. Let's go to Romans 12, verses 4. Uh, I think we're going to read 17 to 21. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. 
So Paul here, he's talking about relationships in the church. These, these are the ways to have good relationships. Don't pay anybody evil for evil. Give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all, if possible. And now he's saying, if possible. It's important for us to see that with some people, it's not possible to live at peace. But he says, if possible, we need to do what we can. As far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Now, I want you to see number 19 here, verse 19. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Okay? Unforgiveness is us deciding that we need to avenge ourselves. They did wrong to me. I got to do wrong to them. I got to make sure they get theirs. I'm going to hang on to something for years and years and years, and it eats me up inside. But Paul here says, never avenge yourselves. Leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Now, I want you to see this. Heaping burning coals on his head does not mean calling fire down on his head. Heaping, heaping burning coals on his head is actually a blessing. This is a, 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 a proverb or a saying that they would have in those days. And what it was is sometimes in your house, you would have a fire that you keep your house warm with. And sometimes that fire goes out. And you need to get your fire started. And, and they didn't have, you know, matches or the lighters or anything like that. Sometimes it's harder to get your fire going. And so you go to your neighbor and you knock on their door and say, hey, can I have a little bit of fire? I'm going to take it and go back to my house and start the fire at my house. And so heaping burning coals on someone's head is giving them the warmth, giving them a blessing, giving them something that they can take back to their house. And usually they would have like a clay pot or something kind of like we do here in Cambodia. And just, they kind of put it on their head and carry it back to their house. And then they can start fire and cook their food and be warm. And that was the blessing that people, that was a blessing. It wasn't a, a curse that, that people were, were, were calling down. So if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. So Paul here is saying, forgive. Let God take his vengeance. Let Put that person in the hands of God. God is a just God. Forgive, forgive, forgive. That's what, that's what Paul is saying. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. So don't try to repay. That's what unforgiveness is. Unforgiveness is trying to repay. Unforgiveness is remembering what they did so that we can repay them later on. No, let, let God take care of that. Let God take care of that. All right. You guys, can, I, can you give me an extra 10 minutes or so? Is that all right? I'm going to go a little bit longer here. I have some more good stuff here. Um, and it's some good practical stuff that we can, we can use in our day-to-day -day lives as we, as we talk about forgiveness. One more example of forgiveness in the Bible. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Okay? It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And verse 12, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Bible was originally written in Greek. And so there's a couple verse when, when we see a word in English, sometimes we don't always exactly remember or we don't exactly know the full meaning of that word. But sometimes what we can do is we can see that same word in other verses that help us to kind of understand the meaning of the word. And so in verse 12, it says, forgive us our debts. And the word forgive in Greek actually has the meaning to leave something, to stop, put something down, and leave it, just to leave it there, to walk away from something, to leave it alone, to not, 
ever go back. That's what that word forgive means. And so when we're asking God to forgive us in this verse, forgive us our debts, it means, God, I ask you to leave it alone. Don't think about it again. Don't remember it. Leave me. Let me have freedom from the debt. Okay? So that's the meaning of the word. Let me go, let's go to the next verse here in Matthew. There's another verse in Matthew where we use the same word. In Matthew 4, verse 18 to 22. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. That same word, they left their nets, is the, actually the word to forgive, to leave it alone. So what, what God is saying is, be like the disciples. Jesus says, be like the disciples. When he was teaching them to pray, he was talking to his disciples. He says, just like you left those nets and followed me, leave. Leave those offenses. Leave them there. Trust me with those offenses, and I'll take care of them. So what he's saying, God's saying to us, okay, take all of these offenses, all these reminders that you have, and let's just leave them. You leave them all here. Gossip, oh, they disobeyed me, they injured me, they lied. Just bring it to Jesus. Just leave them all here. They rejected me. They hurt me. They let us down. Okay, let's leave them all here. They cheated. They lost our money. Okay, God, we can trust you with that. Let's just leave them all here. That's what Jesus is asking us to do. In fact, we have these pads of post-it notes. God says, just trust me in everything. Just leave, all, just leave it all there. God is a faithful God. We're singing about his love, singing about who we are. We're sons of God. God is the king. God is the king. If someone does something unjust to us, he's our father. You don't think he's going to come and rescue us, stand for us, come to us and come to our rescue? You see, if we take things into our own hands, usually we're going to do it the wrong way, and God's going to have to correct us. But if we say, okay, God, it's in your hands, we remove ourselves from under the correction of God, and we just allow God to correct them. We say, God, okay, it's in your hands. I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to receive the healing that I need. I'm going to come to God. I'm going to leave everything here with God. This is the way that God wants for us to live, and it's the way that God wants for us to restore our relationships. We can do this. We can leave it all to God. See, the truth is we're not perfect either. People make mistakes. I make mistakes. So I can't say, I can't stand here and judge, oh, yeah, he was wrong, he did wrong. No, I'm just as guilty. We've all done wrong. I, we, we, all owe, we all owe debts to the king. But what we need to do is be ones who are quick to forgive and so that we can restore these relationships. So let's look at some practical steps here at the end. So there's two people involved in an offense always. The one, the one person is the one who offended and the, or the one who received the offense and the one who is the offender. Let's go to the next slide. So the offender is the person who has done something wrong whether purposely, accidentally, or only in another's perception. Sometimes somebody did wrong to me, and I think it was bad, they, but it really wasn't a sin. It wasn't something I just was expecting something, and, and maybe it was because of my expectations. And then there's the offended, the person who has had something done wrong to them, whether on purpose, accidentally, or only in their perception. So what I want to do here is I want to look at the steps of forgiveness. First thing, for the person, if you have been offended, okay? 
If you have been offended, these are some things that you can do. These are not necessarily in step-by-step order, but these are all healthy things that we can do. Number one is express forgiveness. It's important to say, I forgive so-and-so for da-da-da-da-da, whatever it is that they did. It's important that we say that. Not just hold it into your heart. Oh, yeah, I pray. No. God, I forgive. I leave this in your hands. They did wrong to me. Maybe they didn't even repent. Maybe they didn't even say sorry. Okay, that's okay. I can still forgive. Jesus is the example of someone who forgave even when someone didn't ask them ask him for forgiveness. He was there on the cross. They were killing him. And he said, God, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Sometimes that happens too. People do something. They didn't know what they did. But we can still forgive. So verbalize the forgiveness. Next. Talk about how these actions made you feel. It's important to process the feelings and the emotions. Because we need to be able to express. We need to be able to talk about the hurt that has come to us. Now, it's important that you find somebody that you trust. It's important you talk about the the pain so that you can get the healing. When you go to a doctor, you say, doctor, my my leg hurts or my arm hurts or something. You got to talk about the pain in order to be able to to, uh, get the healing that you need. So I would recommend find somebody that you know, find somebody that you trust, and say, man, this really hurts. This is what happened. It's okay to talk about the hurts. Because God made us with emotions. God made those for a reason. It's to show us that something's not right. Okay? So talk about those things. Okay? Ask God if there's anything that he is trying to teach you through this. Because sometimes, sometimes we get offended at something that somebody did... They weren't even purposely doing something wrong. It's just, maybe it's my perception or my expectation. I expected that they didn't do this, and they didn't do it to me. They didn't give me what I expected. So maybe God is trying, through that pain, to show you that there's something inside that needs to change. Maybe God wants to adjust your expectations. Maybe God wants you to adjust things. I think in every situation that we're in, good or bad, God is trying to mold us and shape us. And I think it's important as Christians to be open to those things. God, what are you trying to show me through this? This is really difficult. This is painful. What's going on here? What's going on in my heart? What do you want me to learn from all this? Next. Forgive again and keep on forgiving. Forgiveness is not just a one and done thing. It's not just, okay, I forgive and boom, let's go on with life. Everything's normal, normal like it was before. No. Sometimes you got to forgive and you got to forgive again and you got to forgive again and you got to forgive again. You've even brought it to Jesus. You just say, God, this is so painful. I bring it to you again. I bring it to you again. I bring it again. I bring it again. Use that pain to draw you closer to God and just to be open with the Lord and say, God, this is brutal. This is really tough. But use it as something that that launches you into the presence of God, into that relationship, into that intimacy with God. If the person apologized to you, let the person know that they, are, that they are forgiven. And I said, if the person apologized. It's important that we, that we don't go around saying to people, hey, I forgive you for not liking me or for not, you know. Sometimes people don't even know they did something wrong. And when we say that we forgive them, we can actually insult them and bring offense, right? I say, oh, Olivia, I forgive you for not liking me. She's like, wait a minute, I had no idea. I didn't know. I didn't know. Now she's offended at me because I thought she didn't like her. And now we're in a big mess all over again, you know? So if they apologize, I think it's important for us to say, okay, look, I forgive you. 
And to be open about that, and you know, it depends on the level of their repentance and their their apology to us. But I think it's important for them to know from you that they are forgiven. Okay. Now, the steps of forgiveness for the person who, oh, also, forgiveness does not mean that there is no consequences. Okay, that's also important for us to know. Just because you forgive, it doesn't mean that they get off scot-free. They, that, you know, okay, yeah, forgive me, I go and, no. Sin brings consequences. Choices, bad choices bring consequences. That's just a part of life, it's the world we live in. So even when you forgive, sometimes that person will still face consequences. But what you're saying is, I'm not going to make sure you get your consequences. I'm going to leave that in the hands of God. Okay? Realize also that forgiveness does not, not mean trust. You can forgive somebody, but trust is earned. If they have done something to hurt you, to injure you, you need to make sure that you are protecting yourself or protecting people that you love as well. Now, I want to go and look at the flip side of this, which we haven't talked a lot about, but I feel that repentance is something super important. This is just going to take another five minutes or so. But it's super important when we're talking about relationships and restoring relationships. Okay? So number one, if you did something to offend other people, and you know you did something wrong, Make the goal a restored relationship, not the removal of your guilt. Now, what I mean by that is this. Sometimes you can do something wrong, and they catch you doing something wrong, and you're like, you feel bad because, man, I shouldn't have done something wrong. So now you say, oh, please forgive me. And the reason you say, please forgive me, is because you want them to not be mad at you anymore. You want them to, okay, sometimes people think that, when you forgive, you have to forget. You, you can't talk about it anymore. And I don't think that that's very healthy for the person who is offended. If I say to you, okay, I did something wrong, please forgive me. And then you're like, uh, 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 I can't say anything anymore about it because they already apologized. It feels kind of rude to bring it back up again, right? So let's make make the goal a restored relationship, not just saying it so I can be free from my guilt. Okay? Let's go to the next slide. Say that you're sorry. If I, if I did something wrong, it's important that I say I'm sorry. Okay? That's, that's important. Okay? The next thing, let them know that you were wrong. When you apologize, don't just say I'm sorry, and then, yeah, I'm free. They don't have to think. Then, but they're still in their pain. Okay? Let them know. Okay, say, hey, look, I did something wrong. What I did to you, that was wrong. Please forgive me. Okay? Say, my actions were wrong. My actions to you were wrong. Okay? I think this is a very important point as well. Seek to understand the pain that you caused. Ask the question, how did my actions make you feel? When you're apologizing to someone, if the goal is a restored relationship, saying the, asking the question, how did my actions make you feel, gives them the opportunity to share their pain. And this can be a little bit difficult for you, but it really helps to open up the doors and say, look, man, this is the the true pain that you caused. And After that, you can say, man, I am sorry I made you feel that way. That was not my intention. And you can apologize to them, and you can bring healing to that person. Because when we get to process our feelings, and we know that we're heard, that brings healing to us. So ask the questions, how did my actions make you feel? All right, next, apologize again. Pay the price for the offense. Sometimes there is a price to be paid for an offense. And it depends from situation to situation, but sometimes there is a price to be paid for an offense. You know, in the Bible, when someone stole a goat or stole a a cow, 
they didn't just have to replace the cow. They had to pay four cows for the one that was stolen and then three more because of the offense that they made. So sometimes, don't just think about it as, man, okay, I said I'm sorry. Now I have my freedom. I can do whatever I want. They don't have to think, I don't have to think about it again. No, think about it. Say, man, okay, what, what can I do to make it right? If your goal is a restored relationship, seek to bring healing to that person. Go and sin no more. Don't do it again, okay? I think if we can all use these steps in our lives and in our relationships, when those painful situations come, whether we are the one who is offending or the one who has received the offense, we can have the hope of restored relationships. Our king, our king forgave our debts. We also ought to go and forgive those debts against us. Amen? Amen? God has a good life for us. He doesn't want us to have pain. He doesn't want us to have hurt in our lives. But the truth is, the world that we live in is a, is a painful place. But through his example, through his forgiveness, we can enter in and live a life of mercy. We can live a life of freedom and be a person who brings that freedom to other people as well. This is the hope that God has put in us that we can bring to other people. Amen? God's a good God. It's not just that we get freedom, but we can give that freedom to other people. I want us all to stand up, if we could. Let's say a quick prayer. And then I'd really like to ask if there's people, if there's anybody here who has, who wants prayer tonight or today, this afternoon. Maybe you have been holding on to forgiveness or to unforgiveness and you just need to come and leave some things here. Like the disciples left their nets. Like God asks us to leave other people's offenses. Maybe you've had a hard time forgiving people in your life. Maybe there's something that comes to mind. Maybe you have a, a sticky note on your heart that every time you, th you stop, every time you're alone, you think about the pain. Okay, well, God today wants you to have that freedom. He's asking you, come. Leave it here. Leave it here. Walk out of here free. Walk out of here debt-free. This is the hope that God has for us. Let's pray together. Can you guys repeat after me while we pray? Can we do that? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear King, we thank you for your forgiveness of us. We had a debt that we could not pay. We owed a, a price that we could not pay. But you had compassion on us. You had mercy. You forgave our debts. You forgave my debt. Thank you. Now, God, other people have done wrong to me. Help me to live a life of forgiveness for them. Help me to live a life that is marked by your mercy so that I can be free and everybody around me can be free too. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God's a good God, amen. Our king is a good king. If there's anybody here who wants prayer today, maybe, maybe something here in the message has spoken to you or there's something else you want prayer about, come on up. We have our leaders up front here. We're going to pray together.
going to see God move. Amen.